Hello, I'm Marcia Chan, and I'm back to talk to you about relative clauses in the article all about Einstein. Let's take a look at nouns modified by relative clauses. I will put these on the screen. They come from the article, and the sentences will be marked as follows. The noun phrase is underlined, the core noun is in bold, and the relative clause is in italics. You'll remember from the first paragraph this phrase, Einstein's incredible intellect that captured the public's imagination. We have the word intellect, that's the noun. The whole noun phrase is Einstein's incredible intellect. Incredible is an adjective that modifies a noun intellect. Einstein's is a possessive noun that modifies incredible intellect. Intellect is our core noun. So what about Einstein's incredible intellect that captured the public's imagination? Here we have a relative clause. So notice that in English there are many ways to modify the noun. We can have adjectives which come before the noun and we have possessives which come before the noun, but relative clauses must come after the noun that captured the public's imagination. Here we have the relative pronoun that referring to Einstein's incredible intellect. We have the verb captured which is a transitive verb BT and we have the object imagination Whose imagination? The public's imagination. So, what captured the public's imagination? Einstein's incredible intellect captured the public's imagination. So here's our pronoun, that, which refers back to or equals this whole noun phrase. Now let's take a look at another relative clause. The hundreds of books about him that are currently in print, which include several published in the past year alone. Aha, uh -huh. now this is a part of a sentence. It's pretty long, but let's take a look at it. Let's analyze it. Books, this is the core noun. There are many modifiers, hundreds of books about him. You see this prepositional phrase which comes after the noun, modifies the noun, makes it more specific. Not all books in the whole world, but books about him, books about Einstein. And we have more modifiers. Which books about him? Which hundreds of books about him? The hundreds, notice that we have a plural here, means that there are many hundreds. The hundreds of books about him that are currently in print, this one, is a relative clause that are currently in print, not the ones that are out of print. Do you know the difference between in print and out of print? Books that are currently in print. These are being published nowadays. Books that are out of print were published in the past, but are no longer being printed. All right, so certainly there are even more books, some that are out of print, but here we're only talking about the hundreds of books about them that are currently in print. Here's the word that, referring back to the hundreds of books about him. We have the verb are, which is a linking verb, VL, and we have our complement in print, the adverb currently in print. Now we have another relative clause, which includes several published in the past year alone, which include, here's our subject, which, here's our verb, include, and here's our object, several. Now, this refers back to the hundreds of books about him that are currently in print, and of those that are currently in print, several of them were published in the last year, recently. That's even though he died a long time ago. He is so famous. P 
people are still passionate about this man and understanding his mind and his life. In another sentence, we see here are some details about his life that you may not know. Details, here's our noun. Some details, here's an adjective modifying the word details. Details about his life. Here's a prepositional phrase that modifies details. Here are some details about your, his life that you may not know. This relative clause modifies details about his life that you may not know. Here's our subject, you. Here's our verb, may not know. Where's the object of know? The object of know is the relative pronoun that, which refers back to some details about his life. He had a mild personality disorder or a learning disability which affected his speech. Here we have disorder. That's one of the core nouns. Disability is the other, and they're connected by a coordinating conjunction, a CC, or one or the other. This is something that experts, a few experts, some experts, have suggested. They don't know because the guy's not alive anymore, and there's no way to assess him the way we can do nowadays. But they think that perhaps he had a disorder. What kind of disorder? A personality disorder. Noun, modifier, here's our core noun, disorder. And this personality disorder was mild, not too strong. So that's our regular adjective. So a mild personality disorder. That's one noun phrase or a learning disability. Here's our noun, modifying the noun disability, learning. Article, noun modifier, core noun, a learning disability. Which affected his speech? Here we have our subject, which, that refers back to this disorder or that disability. Affected is our verb. This one is a transitive verb, VT. That means it has an object. It has an object, speech, which affected his speech. Maybe a personality disorder affected his speech. Perhaps a learning disability affected his speech. Right, that's what this last sentence is about. He's remembered as a child whose interests included playing the violin and listening to classical music. Here we have a case of possessive. We see whose interests. Notice that this relative pronoun must be followed by a noun. The word whose as a relative pronoun is always followed by a noun. It can be a singular or plural noun and in this case, it's a plural noun whose interests included not just one, but at least two. Playing the violin, that's one interest. And listening to classical music, that's another interest. So the child's interests included these two musical activities. So child apostrophe S, a child's interests. This is replaced by the pronoun whose. Notice the spelling is W-H-O-S-E, and it's followed by a noun. A passion which continued into his adult life. Why is it this one? Take two about a passion. All right, so he's remembered as a child whose interests included playing the violin and listening to classical music, a passion which continued into his adult life. So he had a passion for music, and this music, musical passion continued into his adult life, which is the relative pronoun, 
it's a subject of continued. Continued is a VI, intransitive verb, followed by not a direct object, but a prepositional phrase, continued into his adult life. Now the word which refers back to a passion, the passion of music. This is how he felt about school. He disliked his school, where success was determined by one's ability to memorize facts. I guess he didn't like simply memorizing facts. He liked to apply them to real science. He liked to do things that were creative. Now, notice that we are using the word where success was determined by one's ability to memorize facts. Referring back to his school. We analyze it by looking at success. That's our subject. Verb was determined. Do you see the passive voice? And we also have the by phrase. By one's ability to memorize facts. Here the word where represents a prepositional phrase of in his school. So if we had a new sentence, we would say, or we would write, in his school or at his school, success was determined by one's ability to memorize facts. And when we join the two together, we use the adverb where. Einstein excelled in mathematics and in Latin, which he respected because of its emphasis on logic. So he excelled or did very well. He was excellent in mathematics and in Latin, which is a language. Now, most people consider mathematics very logical, but how about languages? Maybe less so, but Latin is perhaps more logical than English, mm -hmm. or perhaps more than his native German. In any case, he respected Latin because of its emphasis on logic. He, subject, respected, verb, BT, transitive, needs an object, respected what? He respected Latin. So this word which, this pronoun which, refers back to Latin and is used as an object pronoun. Einstein was a man whose unsettled private life differed greatly from his focused and balanced consideration of the problems of the universe. So we can see the use of the word whose to modify life, whose life, what kind of life? Private life, that's an adjective. Unsettled private life, another adjective. So the two adjectives, unsettled and private, modify the core noun life. Now, we see the word whose as our possessive. Now we saw above a child whose interests, and I told you whose is always followed by a noun. Whose is followed by a noun here, but it also includes two adjectives which modify that noun. So it's followed by a noun phrase, and it refers back to a man. So this man's unsettled private life differed greatly from his academic and public life. He was a playful man who was easy to talk to. A man. A playful man. So here we have a playful man with the adjective coming before it and the relative clause afterward who was easy to talk to. So we have two ways of modifying. We have many ways of modifying a noun. And a relative clause always goes afterwards. What else? Now, Einstein was married twice, and his first marriage ended in a bitter divorce. He began seeing his cousin Elsa, whom he eventually married. All right, so we have his cousin Elsa, and then we have the relative clause, whom he eventually married. Subject he, verb married, this is transitive, married someone, married whom, this one is the object relative pronoun, referring back to Elsa. Einstein had two sons from his first marriage. Hans Albert, the elder, became a professor, while Eduard, 
who excelled in the arts, died in a psychiatric hospital in Switzerland. Edward died. Edward excelled in the arts. Edward, who excelled in the arts. So we have this relative clause to modify Edward. Subject who, verb excelled. This one is intransitive. It's followed not by a direct object, but by a prepositional phrase. Einstein may have been a man of science, but he was also deeply spiritual. He said, what I see in nature is a magnificent structure that we can comprehend only very imperfectly. And that must fill a thinking person with a feeling of humility. What kind of structure? A magnificent structure. Here is an adjective which comes before the noun. Nature is a magnificent structure. And can we tell more about this magnificent structure? Yes, we can. Using the relative clause that we can comprehend only very imperfectly. In other words, we cannot comprehend nature perfectly. We can comprehend it only a little bit, and it's still not perfect, only very imperfectly. Now, this word that refers back to a magnificent structure. Nature is a magnificent structure. What kind? One that we can comprehend only very imperfectly. Subject we, verb can comprehend. This one is a transitive verb, VT, and it has an object here in the relative pronoun, which refers back to magnificent structure.